I am doing a second video. I did one, the first one on the basic stuff you need to create a home studio. Talked about the inbox and uh, how it interfaces with your computer and, uh, and with Pro Tools. Um, also talked about the way I've set my little uh, studio up on, um, on recording. I like to mic my amp. Um, this mic goes from here over to a mixer, a mixer into the back of an inbox. I just like the sound, this little uh, thicker sound. And so now <clears throat> I've gotten to a point where I've, I've, I've recorded a song. And this is, this is the very, very hard part about uh, having a home studio and, and trying to create, you know, I guess a CD. Um, if you zoom in on my screen here, uh, and I've also mentioned in the first um, video I did that I really should have two screens and I'm going to get a second screen. But anyway, let me just show you uh, some of the things that, that I run into when I, I've got all the music in there, I've got all the instruments in there, and I'm trying to make this, this, this song uh, make sense. So. What you're looking at here are, are various tracks. Uh, for example, this is drones. Uh, I brought a drummer in. I mic'd his drums, uh, and he laid down a, a drum track for me. Uh, these others are, are various uh, 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 guitar tracks. And then uh, on this particular song, and I know this won't make sense to a lot of you, I'm using more than one bass, because I was looking so, for some real heavy uh, bass tones. But uh, this particular song that I've written, uh, it probably has, you know, it's somewhere between 15 and 20 tracks. So uh, the problem uh, that I run into again is I'm trying to to get the best quality sound uh, out of what I recorded, and then hopefully I can I can transfer that to a disc. So you're seeing that I've got all these different uh, tracks. Uh, there's bass tracks, guitar tracks, and I've also brought up a friend of mine in uh, who's laid down some piano tracks and uh, keyboard tracks and so on and so forth. So here it is. I'm, I'm, I'm mixing it. The very dark line that you're looking at here, this is my volume line um, uh, for each track. And you'll notice, you know, they start out here and then they go higher in, in, in volume. I'll just play you a little part of this so you understand why I did that. I, I wanted to start the song out really with just a, a little bit of bass and drums and then have like a talk box guitar. So if you listen to it, you're going to hear that talk box, which would be this track. You hear the drummer in the back. And you hear all these other, all these other instruments start to go higher in volume until you get to a certain point where all the all the instruments are playing and so on and so forth, and that was the that was the effect that I wanted on uh, this particular song. I wanted it to be like just a single guitar with a talk box thing going, uh, the drums uh, being at a normal volume and, and the bass at normal volume, and then have all these other things just kind of start silent and work their way up and form this thing. Uh, so that's what I've done. Uh, I don't know if, if all of you are real familiar with you know how this works. Let's just say I wanted to listen to um, you know I wasn't sure about uh, I'm hearing something you know which track is messing and where did I make that where did I make that mistake because I've got tw you know 15 or 20 tracks. If if you're familiar with uh, Pro Tools, you can you can do this. You can we can just isolate a track by hitting S which will mute all the other tracks. And this way, all I'm gonna hear is this uh, bass track, which I'll fast forward so you can hear. So here I'm just listening. So that's a bass track, you know, where you can just solo and listen to one track at a time. That puts them all back together if I take side on. Another thing, uh, I don't know if you if you know this about Pro Tools. When you get into it and you do the mixing, 
if this is my editing screen, so I, let me just turn the volume down, and I'll, I'll talk as this is playing. So things are playing here. Let's say I, I don't like the sound of a particular guitar, like the, the guitar is not giving me what I want. I can uh, I can go down to the mixing screen, which is here, and then there's. What I usually do on the track is I, I, I do a lot of adjustments on the, let me turn this down some more, on the compression. Uh, uh, I can pull up compression and I can, I can look at, you know, this is for guitars. What kind of sounds do I want on compression? On this one I want clean limit. And so that'll make the adjustment here. And then on all of them I've got uh, EQs going. So for example on this one it's an electric guitar. You know, what kind of sound do I want out of that electric guitar? It gives you uh, right here. It gives you all these options that you can you can add to you know your, your sound of that particular guitar. This one I just used the uh, guitar, a uh, seven band equalizer. Fill it in, and that's the sound I wanted. Okay, so this is your your mixing board right here, and I can go back to where we were. And here's the edit and the song's playing. Right now you're listening to, I wanted a, a 12 string effect. So what you're hearing, this is 12 string. Or excuse me, that's the wrong track. Where's the 12 string? Right here. That's the 12 string playing the lead right there. So that's all of them. Now, Talk a little about a little bit about the editing screen and the mixing screen, and there's a, just a, a ton of stuff you have to learn. And if somebody says that it's uh, uh, you know it's 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 a very easy process, then they're not being truthful. It's a very very uh, um, complicated process. And Pro Tools is Pro Tools is like you know you can get into it, and you can record a song, and then there's so many levels of it. It just it's very very deep and there's a, so much to learn about it and I you know I've, I'm just starting I'm just learning stuff here and there now <clears throat> now that I, let's just say for example that I'm, I'm good with this song and uh, I usually uh, uh, right here there's there's various things you can do for example I can I can block that track I can uh, I can go here that tells me the, the, the waveform of the song here's the volume Here's, the, uh, you know, if you mute it, you want to mute it, and pan, pan is where we can take a track, and if I move the pan up, then, you know, it'll come out of the, for example, the left speaker, if I move it down, come out of the right speaker, if you want a panning effect. But right now, let's just say that I'm done, uh, I've, I've, I've done all those sorts of things, and I'm blocking them up right here because uh, we're going to bounce it, <coughs> and I'm bouncing it, uh, so I can put it on a, uh, uh, a CD. So we're blocking all these and we're just about there. I think we're there. Okay, so I've got them all blocked. Almost all. Now they're all blocked. Okay, so now I'm, gonna, I'm going to bounce. You hit the file, you go down to bounce to disk, and that's gonna bring up uh, a pop-up. And it says bounce and it, you know, uh, it gives you options here too, and I want I, I don't want to have a wave file. I want to have an MP3, uh, so I click MP3 stereo, um, you know, various things, and then we hit bounce, and then it goes from here to my hard drive, and then what we do, uh, we can take it from the hard drive, and using iTunes, we can uh, import the song into iTunes, and from there we take our our CDs and we burn the CD and then when you're doing uh, or when you're trying to create a CD you're trying to find out if you got the right sound so what I'll do is I'll take a CD stick it in my car listen to it how does it sound in my car when you play it up here through these monitors it sounds a certain way if you play it straight with the real cheap monitors here if you come with a computer it sounds different so I'm trying